for her roles in the likes of The Avengers and absolutely fabulous, of course. But for the past week, she's taken a break from the world of telly to visit Bangladesh. She's been witnessing thousands of blind children being given back their sight thanks to a very simple and cheap operation. Joanna returned late last night and, uh, and she's here with us this morning looking after a very long flight, yes. completely beautiful, as Radiant. always. How are you? I'm very well, and I think um, I'm fired up, probably. That's why I took with this, with this extraordinary thing, a week of just life-altering observations. So Sight Savers is, the, is the, the charity? Yes, it tackles blindness across the world for all kinds of, you know, whether it's trachoma or river blindness, all these things like this. And in Bangladesh, there's a disproportionately large number of blind children, mm. um, about 42,000 blind children. And about a third of that, a quarter of that, a third of that, is completely needless blindness. It's children who are born with cataracts. Of course, one never knew this. In this country, we think cataracts come with age. Mm. Over there, because of vitamin A deficiency and, and poverty in general, perhaps lack of breastfeeding and um, you know, genetic makeup, these children are born with cataracts, mm. completely blind. And so suddenly, an operation in which takes about 12, 14 minutes removes the cataract and suddenly they can see. So when did you get involved with, uh, with I've this? Been, I was an, an admirer of Sight Savers work and I actually um, sort of got in touch with them and I've done some sort of small scale work here, voiceovers for them and fundraising dinners in the UK. Mm. But this was the first overseas trip they'd asked mm. me to do. And it and, and how, how hands on were you? So you, you, you flew out, you had a week, a week in Bangladesh. Yes, we wanted to follow the particular story of, let's say, because it makes it easier when you follow one story and to see how it happens. And they've determined, Sight Savers, to track down every child, no matter how poor, in every village, no matter how remote, across Bangladesh, which is one of the most populated nations in the world, and find the ones who can have this, this mm. blindness operated on. And so we followed out the, um, the, the local health worker, as it were, who but goes on a little blue bicycle around all the villages and says, can I see the children? Can I check out the health? Let me see, is this child blind? May I have a look at them? And then she can refer them to the, ne to the next part, which is the clinic, which looks and says, this child can be operated on. Oh. So we found the little boy, Arif, whose mother was white with fear. They'd never left this tiny rural village. They'd never been to any kind of city, let alone into a hospital or an operating theater. Mm. And so she bravely came with that little, little boy. Um, the father, there was one other child, a little girl, and the father, he earns about 40 pence a day as, um, as a tricycle rider, and he has to bring his family up on that. And I have to say, these people are not beggars. Mm. They're the opposite of that. They're extremely kind and courteous mm. and proud and so generous to you when, you when you see them. But they've got nothing. They've got nothing. Mm. No electricity, no kind of cleanliness or radios, anything. Anyways, following this little brave little boy, who played marbles in the sand, but of course he couldn't even see what, what he was age doing. Was he then? Five and a half. Five and a half. So he he was blind at birth. Yeah. But this operation could have. I saved watched the that. operation through the microscope. You saw. Saw it. Ah. Saw the cataract being cleared away. Saw the little eye being stitched. Saw the pad going on. Wow. And the next day, the very next day, I helped to take the the pad off that little one's eye. And unbelievably, for the first time ever, he could he could perceive things. Mm. So he. He was as sharp as a, a box of tacks, <laughs> but he'd never seen anything. Mm. And so somebody, somebody could say, how many fingers am I holding up? And he looked and he said, three. He could count, but he didn't know what three looked like. And yeah. suddenly he could go, ek dortin, three. I can see three fingers. I can't tell you. And the That's look amazing. on his mother's face. Well, I had to go to the back of the room and have a bit of a blub. Yeah. Mm, I yeah. tell you, Not it surprised. really affected me. For him to see his mother for the very first time as well. And to real. see everything, to see the shape of everything, because mm. he knew the touch of everything and kind of the sound of it. But to be able to see what all this meant. Do you, he was five and that was fine, he got the operation, but is there a sort of age yes. limit where they can't have it anymore? Seven. Um, seven is about to get the top them limit, because seven. by then the optic nerve, which if it hasn't been used, I mean it's quite a complicated way of talking about it, but mm. the, although the cataract is in the front of the eye, the optic nerve is the main thing, mm -hmm. and it kind of atrophies if it can't see by the age of seven and the child growing and growing, and after that they then tend to become irreversibly blind, so yeah. it's a real right. race against time. Mm. So uh, the, the cost is negligible, really? It costs as little as £27 to have this operation done, which of course over in our rich world here, mm. we just go 27 quid for a child to get not in its sight, but eventually its life back, actually, because mm. it means that it can now ed study in school sure. and get a job and have a life. Um, I don't know, it just shattered me to think, uh, think of 27 pounds, which means, I mean, although it's quite a lot of money over here, over mm. there it is sometimes so far beyond the dreams of avarice. Mm. Yes. That well, we, 40p we a day. I mean, yes. if you're, you know, that's and that's to feed them and clothe them. Yeah. Mm. So, um, 
So that's my job, is to try to say, do you think we can help you? Yeah. Who, who performs the operations? Do you go in with a team? Because I know no, sometimes the Bangladeshi they do that. surgeons they do it themselves. They're absolutely trained they do, they in, do in Isla themselves. you know, at the Islamia Hospital, which is in Dhaka, in the capital of Bangladesh. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, mm. it's dedicated entirely to, to eye operations. But because um, grown-ups can have it done, they just have their eyes wedged open and they can just sit there with anaesthetic eye drops and have it done and they're out in eight minutes. Children, the operation is, is, is slightly more expensive because they have to have an anaesthetic. Mm. Because little ones, you can't teach them, particularly children who've never been in a, in a building before, mm, really. Of course. Um, you can't tell a little two years. Some of them are two months old, right? Mm, just be babies. Um, just be babies. And they, but they, they get, so they get an anaesthetic. So that takes a bit of thing. Mm. In it goes, done, tick tock, 14 minutes. It's only that. Mm. And these skilled, brilliant people who then have to look after them up till about the age of 15 to make sure that everything goes well, mm. to give them post-operative care. And, the, and uh, uh, we were talking earlier on, you say that the, the extraordinary difference there to the whole community is rather than have someone who, and it's, they're not, not geared up to look after a, 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 a blind child, a blind mm -hmm. person, it is suddenly an active member of the community yeah. um, and not... Uh, not a drain on resources, mm -hmm. not an anxiety to the parents, not somebody who has to be led about by the hand quite mm -hmm. often. Because if you, I mean, I tell you, these villages are beyond rural. They are fabulously kept and they're so beautifully looked after. But it's mud. Mm. It's, it's little bamboo platted houses and inside there's nothing, there is nothing, they own nothing. Mm. They've got the clothes they stand up in and one set of best clothes which they wore to the operating thing and to come back again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we'll uh, we'll obviously put uh, put all the details sure. um, of of sight savers on our website if uh, if you would like to uh, to get involved uh, for that negligible amount of money, sort of thirty pounds. But this appeals mm. to sort of everything about you, doesn't it? Because mm. you're a traveller, you love travelling. I love yeah? travelling. I I don't know. Um, I think I'd go mad if I didn't get the chance to travel. And I think that although I love travelling anyway, even within this country, there's something about going to places which are very remote and very off the beaten track, and very different, and finding. That extraordinary thing is that no matter how different the culture and the look of people and the way of things, we are all exactly the same. Exactly, not slightly the same. Exactly the same. And another small girl called Ritu who had an operation, which was the second cataract she'd done, which meant that she could then see completely. Her grandmother, I'm a grandmother now, her grandmother came up to my waist and we had a bit of a granny hug and a bit of a granny kiss. And again, <laughs> I had a bit of a granny blub because there was this little... I thought, we're all the same, mad, yeah. anxious that your little granddaughter should, should do well. Mm. And I felt so kind of, such a bond there, you know. Mm. So that's, a, that's what, what I What sort of a granny are you then? I hope a bit hands-on, a bit lovely. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Not too spoily, but a bit spoily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you've, you've been working for, uh, this is, the, the, the Sightsavers trip has come at the, the yes. tail end of quite a, yes. uh, an intensive amount of time in the studio. Yes. We've done six episodes of a brand new drama called Sensitive Skin. Um, which was we all struggled about how to describe it and the best we could come up with was a melancholy urban comedy. Okay, and if, <laughs> it's different. And if you know that it's got Dennis Lawson in oh, it. Oh, we and love the, Dennis he's, Lawson. Oh, he's, he's just bad. top. And we play husband and wife who's, who are happy but who's got, who've got that sort of stage in their life and in their marriage where you kind of go, is, is that all mm. there was? Mm. Is that all it is? And it's terribly strange because it was very funny. Um, but then suddenly something happened, and it was really a bit woo. They're mm. often the best. Yeah, uh, they yeah. are. That, that, that mm. comedy that makes you laugh, and then yes. suddenly you realise, oh, I've oh. got the wrong look on my face. Yeah. Mm. So that comes out in September. But it was, it was just fantastic to work on it. We had a, we had an extraordinary, an extraordinary cast, and it was brilliant. And it was shot all around London, mm. and made London look a little bit different. So it's got a kind of feeling of a French film or a Woody Allen film. Do you know that slightly strange feeling about it mm. that makes it not feel like. And we didn't know what to call it because it's not really a drama, it's not really a comedy. Mm. So anyway, it's called a melancholy urban... What should I call it? Melancholy urban comedy? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'll do. I'll do. <laughs> Different. Thank anyway. you for, for coming in today. You. It's always uh, a, a pleasure to yeah. have you. And, and, um, and, and thank you for, uh, for mm -hmm. talking about that. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. You said we'll put all the details on the website. We will. Well, we we'll share it. Thank you very much for having me. As we said, if